the story we've been told in churches and schools throughout uh, Western civilization, at least, is not true. And uh, I've been doing about 20 years worth of research into the ancient texts, which now have been proven using modern DNA um, methods. And so I'm also a lawyer and a master's degree in history. But as a lawyer, we know once you get DNA proof into a courtroom, you start letting go of some people who are in death row. And so I had to pay attention to that when National Geographic in 2006 released its landmark study by taking saliva from women all over the world to show where different races came from. And they were all a little surprised when all the saliva from all over the world went back to one woman. She lived in Ethiopia, and it was only 200,000 years ago. So the scholar Spencer Wells, who did the work, very decorated man, he said in Philadelphia, in a lecture I was in, there's not enough time for Darwin. 200,000 years is not enough time for five generations, so something happened at 200,000 BC. And I said, well, the mitochondria trail of the female didn't go up a tree to an ape, and it stopped. And so what stopped it? And what was fascinating from my history side of my research was that the ancient Sumerian texts, as decoded by Zechariah Sitchin, said the same place, Ethiopia, the same time, 200,000 BC. So those texts are, are at least 6,000 BC. So who is teaching these people what we now know as a modern DNA uh, uh, a method? And so what they said was a female scientist was brought here from a, a tenth planet that hit our planet at one point, and she was brought here to change the ape into a human being to get the human beings to go and get gold for them. And so I just assumed that was true, just for the sake of the argument, and I watched to see through history what happened. And I was able to determine that Mary Ma that the Ninma, as her name, appears as many different people in history, although Enlil, the uh, uh, person who was in charge of getting the gold for them, he was a military commander, he ended up scrambling the languages at the Tower of Babel, because they were building too quickly these humans, and they weren't doing their work getting the gold. So we scramble all the languages of the world, and so we lose these people in history, and they live a very long time. Um, so we lose them because their name changes, but the tasks they do and their epithets, their nicknames, give them away. So this is research that you've done based upon Zacharias Sitchin's work? Sitchin, I started with Zacharias Sitchin's, and I just assumed what he had written was true, then when they had the DNA, I was working with the DNA, and then it works. Uh, DNA, from DNA from the saliva tests that proved it, that proved that he was that the Sumerian texts were correct as he translated them, and then the Dogon tribe of, uh, of uh, Africa, or the original Egyptians, they had the path of Sirius A and B going across our sky. Well, you can't see Sirius B; it's a collapsed star, so uh, you don't see. It. They had it traced out on their stone tablets, and they said, "Who did this?" The fellow who lived in the water over there, called the Word. He has long hair, blue eyes, a white fellow. And here's, here's black Af uh, you know, Africans talking about a white fellow with blue eyes and blonde hair. Long hair came out of that lake. And so I looked all over the world for, for ancient texts or ancient stories of creation to figure out, could this be true? And you find the story told in different cultures, particularly Peru with the Inca story. This, I heard a lake Titicaca came out a fellow with blue eyes, called himself the Prince of Peace. And I'm going, uh-oh, the son of man. And then in China, it's the same story. Although they look more Chinese, he's called Fuxi and Nu Hua. Uh, they, they started the first culture in China. So uh, I was able to piece together those research with biblical knowledge. And our problem today is that scholars will poo-poo both the Old Testament and the New Testament as being a collection of stories. Instead of treating it for what it is, it's a very accurate history uh, kept over the years carefully by Jewish scholars and then Christian scholars. We have those to work from. And so when you get to the Gen Genesis 1 and 2, there are two stories of creation. In Genesis 1, 26, we're born, we were made in our image, which is three beings that made them. And in Genesis 2, you get to a Lord God who begins to tell a story of Adam first, male energy first, and the, you know, the, the, how the Vatican runs things with male energy, and the female kind of in the back seat. And that's really the reverse. When they made the first Adam, it was one thing, but when they made the Eve, she was given um, DNA. You know, they both have DNA from a very, from a, a very advanced race on, on the planet called Nibiru.
but the female really had this energy because she has a magnetic field that she's tied to, whereas the male is tied to the electrical field. And uh, so she's able to go, we know through astrophysics principles now, that uh, you can go interdimensionally using the magnetic field. We no longer need a machine. And that's what these ET people are experiencing. Uh, we've gone now from the small cone of energy we were in for 5,000 years starting with the Jewish Bible in 3000 BC more or less and the um, Mayan Bible uh, uh, and you come out the other side of a 5,000 year cone of time and we're poking out here in 2012 and do a much bigger alignment directly with the center of our galactic system with the black hole and now people's DNA that's hidden in there the junk DNA is turning on fast too fast almost for people to to keep up with to the point that if they tell somebody what's going on inside them they think they're crazy but I can, I can tell you from my research in Toronto and Ontario it's going on all over the place they just don't have anybody to talk to what is going on exactly their DNA is turning on so that you can be in two different points uh, on the planet or in two different dimensions at the same time what does that mean and uh, it's really eternity. It's, 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 it, we're only t caught by time in the time-space continuum of Einstein, where we get older and then we, then we die. But we don't die. The soul never dies. It just moves on to the next dimension. But one of the theories is that the, we were here at very advanced beings over many, many lifetimes we've been here. When the magnetic field was really big, we could create anything we want. We could be birds, dolphins, we could do anything and then fly out of here. The magnetic field fell quickly and it trapped all these souls here. And that's reincarnation and they really can't get out and they keep doing the same things, the same killing and murdering and the pain they're experiencing and now beings of light have gotten through from Pleiades star system etc and they're here because where we are now in time is the end of the 26,000 year cycle is part of a much bigger cycle and what's about to happen on the earth has never happened before in, in all the records of time. Now what that is is a very creative experience, what it is we don't know because it's never occurred before, but the females are, are leading the way. And the allegation is that reptilian beings have come to the planet because they exist in the third dimension. Uh, eating, sex, a hockey game, this is all enjoyable to them. They're not in the fourth uh, dimension, the heart. Females live in the fourth dimension and now can go to the fifth dimension. Well, because she's tied to magnetic field, she can go to the fifth dimension of pure love um, but the ones in the fifth dimension don't want the males coming as long as they're this, in this destructive co you know, mode of, uh, of killing, raping, and, and, and money, uh, and greed. So they have to, the women have to begin to transform the males because in the age of Aquarius, the female goddess is back and she's here to train or retrain the males to what they forgot. And so what is the message of your book? I've written four books. I started out actually in nutrition. When I lost 30 pounds in a month, I was an Olympian, I was overweight, I thought I was okay, but I was tired all the time. I didn't understand how to make energy, imagine that, an Olympic sprinter, no one taught me how to make energy, and, um, and, I, and I was uh, overweight. And I quickly lost the 30 pounds in 30 days by feeding the cells exactly what they're programmed to take, and then I just asked the question, I wonder who fashioned these cells so perfectly? And when you ask, the door opens, do you have the courage to walk down there and really leave your life that you're leading? You know, you don't have to leave home, but your friends uh, and the parish priest aren't going to be your friend anymore. So you have to go on your own to find a new group of people, and that's what's happening here in Brantford, that these groups come together. And when you're an Olympian, you're in a program, I was in the best Olympic program in history, well, you've got those role models ahead, but now these people are having this experience, they have nobody to go to. This has never happened before. And so the focus of your books and the message is? Feed your cells the six things that, that deliver perfect health. I've never been sick in 20 years. Uh, the second part is uh, you'll be, uh, you, you never will be sick. No diseases will happen. The key element is do not eat a cooked protein source. You cannot digest the cooked protein, just raw proteins. And those cooked proteins end up in the breast, uterus, and prostate, or the back of the spine causing arthritis and uh, they can be gotten rid of with a very high-end protease enzyme, but why put it in, the place, in your body in the first place? And the proof is, uh, don't eat a trans fat. Well, trans fats are just cooked fats. On the stove, you're making trans fats. Stop eating cooked protein. So fruits, 
lightly steamed fish, and then all the vegetables, uh, etc. So that keeps the body in what's called dry pack. I'm not just eating uh, for, for, for as, as a sporting activity. You want to keep the cells in dry pack, and when the hexagons are almost touching each other with a little bit of water, and you see the sunlight come into the body, it's kapow time. And I have gone through magnetic field. I was in Sweden, and I was in Philadelphia at the same time. Same moment, no time had gone by. What does that mean? Uh, I was uh, sitting uh, both on my sofa and on a sofa in, in Sweden at the same moment. And who was there uh, to confirm that? Well, what happened was this corkscrew came out of my head. I was on the typewriter to meet this girl the next day and go on a, on a research trip. And I'm a contractor, so I know what my body's about as an Olympian. This corkscrew came out, and I went, now what's that? I didn't doubt it. I know I felt it, and it was like a fishing rod, so I sent it over Newfoundland, and when it went, and I'm typing at the same time, and when it landed over there, I could feel it land, the cat went, Wah! went over to meet her the next day, walked in an apartment, and there's a picture on the wall in another room than where the camera was, when I talked to her, and there was a yogi master with a corkscrew coming out of his head. So I'd been in Sweden on her sofa, not, not, I'm still sitting here, but I could feel my self go over and touch her sofa and come back. So not on a physical level, but on a consciousness level you traveled. Consciousness level, and then, and then while it was happening, um, I was suddenly immersed while I was typing, I'm typing away, and I was in a red aquarium, I would call it, and I heard this noise, boom, 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 boom. And she said, where are you now? This is after the sofa. And I said, I think I'm in your heart chakra. Like, just don't think, just say what comes out of your head, out of your mouth. First thought, best thought. I think I'm in your heart chakra. She goes, you are at the door to the core of my heart. So, let me get back. So your books are about nutrition and... How, no, not nutrition because it's too confusing. How to feed the cells per, so they'll operate perfectly. I thought you were doing research on what Zachary Stitch... Then I went and asked the question, so who fat... Talk about the book that's yeah. relevant to what we're talking about. So then, I, so then I went and looked at who fashioned the first atom, who fashioned these cells, and then I got into who fashioned the first atom, and that's when I walked into the DNA research and the work of Zachariah Sitch, and say we really came from another planet. Okay, so now let me get that in one flow. So I said, so what's your message in, in your books? The human beings are a hybrid. We were not. We didn't come up through evolution. We were advanced sperm was put into the first uh, ovum of a, of an ape. That's the immaculate conception that the Christians talk about, and uh, we have this hidden DNA, a dormant junk DNA, turning on now because the Earth is in a much uh, alignment with a much higher energy as a black hole. And so, in there, you can go through the black hole as the white hole. Astrophysicists knew this or theorized this, but when you die, you go through to that white light. Well, now you can go home to the white light, and you can come back because the Stargate is open. So you can go see all your dead, dead relatives, if you, that's what you want to do, and cut, you can come right back and you'll still be sitting here. No time has gone by. So what's the purpose of your books? To educate uh, human beings that they are extremely advanced machines. What I always tell women is you're in the most advanced machine in the known universe. It just didn't come with instructions. So it's time to, she knows intuitively how to, how to do this, but they're, mis, they're mistaught about food and they're mistaught about their own female power because they've been in the back seat for, for quite a bit of time. Your book reveals this. And where's humanity go? With the knowledge that you've come across in your research, what is the message? Well, the message would be uh, the power of, uh, the, I would say, the magnetic field as, as love exists. It's an attractive force. It's a creative force. And really, you can create anything you want, anything, even other universes. And then you can go and live in them and still be here. The power of the right side of the brain is, 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 is limitless. Go and have a great time. Thank you.